How you doing, YouTube? Matt with Massive Beer Reviews, back to get another review. And it is, uh, yeah, it's a little uh, Belgian-style double goodness in the form of Ovilias. Um, Belgian-style double barrel-aged. Um, yeah, kind of uh, super curious to give this a whirl. Uh, I haven't had an Ovilia beer in a while. Not one of my favorite American-made Belgian ales. Um, but it is barrel-aged. And honestly, Sierra Nevada, who makes the Ovivia line, um, they do a really good job. As much as I'm not a huge fan of their broad lineup, their barrel aging program is pretty damn awesome. I mean, you know, the Narwhal barrel is Narwhal is off the hook. I'm not a huge fan of the Bigfoot unless it's about 70 or 80 years old. And that barrel age is pretty damn nice. So I'm super excited to give this world see what's going on because it's a bit of a complex beer. We'll get to that because there's a big story in the back that tells everything. Uh, start as far as what it says on the front of the bottle. Um, Barrel Age Ovila, um, Belgian style double Sierra Nevada, brewed in collaboration amongst the Abbey of New Clairou, uh, Abbey Ales, um, Monistic American Inspiration Innovation. Um, Ovila Double, our Ovila Abbey Ale series of beers is a collaboration with the monks of Abbey New Clairou in Vina, California. The monks they operate a winery, so it's a fitting choice to age this Abbey Double in a blend of red wine and bourbon barrels to add a new level of complexity to an early beguiling brew. Uh, rich malt flavors of burnt sugar and caramel blend seamlessly with bright fruit nose from the wine barrels, while the bourbon oak lends a mellow hint of um, vanilla. And that's pretty much it. Uh, Label-wise, it's cool. Nice screen printing, design-wise, the whole thing. I dig it. You know? This year I've had his label and it's pretty on point from top to bottom. So, yeah, no complaints there. So, let's see what this sucker has to offer. Hold that cork in. I don't think it's going to pop out. It'll probably be a bit of a struggle. Be barrel aged. Oh, no. Ooh. No real pop whatsoever. Just kind of popped out there. So, hopefully, she's not sideways. So, let's see what we got here. Hmm. A little bit lighter than what I expected. Um. You know, taking a double, mixing it, blending it from aging in red wine and aging in a bourbon barrel, you figure it'd have a, a bit darker color than that. It's coming out a little bit lighter than what a base double would look like. Just a, you know, half a pinky of off-white head. Kind of kooky carbonation going on in the edges. Um, not really much else. You can get a little bit of carbonation there, but you wouldn't expect big carbonation, though. The bubbles that are there are pretty damn gigantic. You wouldn't expect a ton of carbonation. Based off the fact that it's barrel aged. So, yeah. She looks kind of weird. Let's put it that way. But weird can be good sometimes. So, let's see what she smells like. Getting a little bit of, like, sweet candy bourbon. That caramel vanilla. Um, and a little, ever so slightest bit of, like, bourbon uh, uh, flavoring. Not boozy, but actual bourbon. Maybe the ever so slightest bit of fruitiness from the wine. That's pretty much it. Yeah, a little bit of that bourbon, nice bit of vanilla, a little bit of caramel, ever so slightest bit of fruitiness, or bright red fruitiness from the wine. No Belgian spiciness really in there. No kind of breadiness or Belgian candy brown sugar. Very kind of muted nose. You're talking about, you know, it's only eight, what is it, eight and a half percent, I believe. Eight, yes, eight and a half percent. You know, it's not the biggest beer in the world, but you just think of figure to lend a kind of bigger nose, being that it's Belgian double, it's aged in ba multiple barrels and blended. So, yeah, it doesn't smell bad, it just smells muted. So, yeah. So, she kind of looks kooky. She smells kooky. Let's see what she tastes like. Cheers. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to say right now, really not much going on in this beer for, for what it is touted as and what it is born from or what it's supposed to be. It's pretty uninspiring. First off, very nondescript, very generic Belgian double in taste. Kind of what I remember from when I had my first Ovidia a while ago. Reason why I didn't go back to it. So, it's not a huge beer to begin with, but 
throw it in barrels. You expected Mimi to bring out a little bit more. First off, well, second off, I already went first off. Not really getting really any kind of wine out of this. The ever so slightest bit of fruitiness that's not Belgian fruit. Even though that's not even really in the double itself. Almost like a plumminess as opposed to like a red grapiness. Um, yeah. And bourbon. Zero bourbon in the mouth. A little bit of oakiness. Like so subtle because everything else is so muted you can kind of pick it up. A little bit of actually a little bit of vanilla, a little bit of bourbon taste, but no heat whatsoever. It is there, but it's very, very muted. You have to dig into it to kind of get it. Yeah, if you told me, if you told me this is barrel aged, I'd be surprised. Um, if you told me it was barrel aged, two different barrels and blended together, I'd be surprised. Yeah, really kind of uninspiring, and falling flat for me. Um, don't know if I got a bunk bottle. I don't think so. I don't get any kind of turning can you stand in this bottle. Um, it did kind of pop with almost no kind of carbonation. Didn't really have much of a head. But it is a Belgian beer that's been aged in barrels, so they can come off a little bit flatter. It's not flat. There's carbonation in there. But, yeah, pretty, uh, I expected way more. Um, so, yeah, really not much else to say. Rating-wise, I'm going to give it a 75. Um, yeah. It's okay. It's not a bad beer. If you gave me this at a party and said, here, drink this. I'd be like, ah, it's not too bad. But for what it is, it really kind of falls flat. Um, value and availability. It's here in Nevada. Pretty much get them anywhere. So I'm going to give it an availability of a nine. Value, I'm going to give it one because this may, might have been where I should have uh, caught on because this bottle costs 20 bucks. Or twenty one bucks, twenty one dollars. And when I grabbed it, I was like, "Oh man," because the one place I go to puts the price on the bottom. And I'm like, oh, well, here we go. What's this gonna cost? Here in Nevada, barrel age is gonna be in Pennsylvania. They're like twenty six dollars. I was like, "Here we go." And I looked, and it was twenty one bucks. And I was like, "Oh, you know, for a barrel age here in Nevada offering, that's not too bad." <sighs> Makes sense now. They probably know what's in the bottle, so they could have put it out there a little bit cheaper. Um, so yeah, on a value one, availability nine, and overall 75. Just really kind of falls flat. Then a bad tasting beer, if you're into subtle complexities, a lot of people say they're into subtle complexities. Mm. In all actuality, they just don't like big beers. If you like super muted, subtle stuff that has the most minute amount of barrel because it's there but it's very 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 small and the beer itself is quite small so it's a very small beer in a big bottle um then you'll like this other than that it's kind of a swing to miss for me especially at the price point and what could have been so there you go another review in the books hopefully you guys enjoyed the review uh if you did or you didn't or somewhere in between please leave a comment in the comment section below and like subscribe and all that fun stuff um if you like check us out anywhere else on the internet you can facebook twitter instagram on tap Massive beers in all four of those places, and yeah, another review down. So, hopefully, you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully, you're enjoying a much better Belgian double aged in multiple barrels. And uh, hopefully, see you next time. Cheers.